I need to be collecting data, how much I need to be looking at data, how much I need to be analyzing data, like data runs. Welcome back to Teaching with Tania. I am in a way different spot because this is like my peaceful place where I come to relax after a long day and just to reflect on my quarter one as a first year teacher. Like the, the quarter flew. Literally you're in the thick of it just doing whatever you can for your students and you look up and the quarter is almost over and now it is officially over. So we're now in quarter two and I just wanted to piggyback off of some things that I have learned. As an educator, you're constantly reflecting on your craft, how you can do better, how you can make changes to be better for your students. So I hope the wind isn't too distracting, but let's get right into the video. you who are new, I am a first year third grade teacher and I'm super excited to be teaching. The first thing I learned that's super important is that systems are key. And yes, everybody says have classroom procedures, all that stuff, but I'm talking about for myself as a teacher. I didn't set up that many systems and so I feel like I was creating a system every week to make sure that my day ran smoothly. For example, just recently, I realized I don't have a system for makeup work. Like every time I gave out work, and then students weren't here, I would literally throw it away. <laughs> I knew that students would be absent, but I thought like putting their name. Long story short, I didn't have a system for absent work and for students to make up their work. And so now I have a system where the student of the week usually passes out papers or half of the uh, papers already on their desk so that when students come in, they know what to work on. And then for students that are not here while the other students are working, I would go ahead and um, write their name on the paper and then put it in the makeup work bin which is crazy i just should have already thought of that at the beginning of the year but i just didn't think anything of it so i have a makeup bin now and that has saved me a lot of time because if i have students pull out something that they needed the day before that they were absent for i could just say go to the makeup work bin this is what we're doing or even like your resource or specials whatever your school calls it um during that time or even when they have free time hey you weren't here this that day let's make up this work and it's a much easier system and students know where it is and I know where it is and at the end of the day everybody's making up the work. I've put in a lot more systems since the beginning of the year in quarter one so that quarter two can run a lot more smoothly and effectively for students when they're not here. The second thing that I have learned in quarter two is that data runs everything. I didn't realize how much I need to be collecting data, how much I need to be looking at data, how much I need to be analyzing data, like data runs education at this point. Um, and I see very much why it was just I wasn't prepared to be tracking, looking, and having data posted. So that is my next step as I head into quarter two, just making sure that I know the data and what the goals are for an, the end of the year, and then being able to communicate that to my students. I'm so good out here, let me tell you guys. But anyways, if you are a teacher, a rising teacher, make sure you have a way to track data, create worksheets, graphs, trackers, whatever you need to do to keep yourself sane and not go like data crazy. <laughs> Also, if you are a veteran teacher, I would love for you to comment down below how you um, like to track your data or how you keep track of your data of your students. I'd love to know that. And um, so we could just share our resources and things down below. And while you're down there, go ahead and comment a question because in my next video, I will be doing my Q&A. Somebody, a subscriber asked me for a long time ago, but I'm just now getting to it. So go ahead and pop down your questions so I can answer them in the next video. Third thing I've learned is that community and your coworkers are super important. And I didn't realize that until like I wasn't being in community or wasn't going out with my coworkers. And I just felt really alone, really drained. But um, every other week, that's also when we get paid, um, my coworkers like to go out and I sometimes go with them like probably once a month. And that has helped me like open up my world and my vision a lot wider because it's not just me in the classroom I feel like in the trenches with my students, but instead like education, like we cannot do this work alone. Education is a team sport. That's why you guys are my teammates. And we just make it happen for our students. We need the support, whether it's pushing, pull outs, even like me, I have a um, co-teacher who teaches math and science. And the students, once they knew we weren't on the same page, it has really helped um, cultivate just our classroom community and our community as a third grade team. I also eat lunch with her every day. At first I wasn't doing that, but I realized like I need some adult communication. So eating lunch with her has been amazing. And that just helps me realize like, hey, just take a breath. It is okay. It is okay. Whatever's going on or whatever happened that first block, like 
it is okay. It's also good for me to like gauge how my second block, which was her first block, we switch after lunch, how the kids are doing or where I may need to adjust. Like if they're hyped up on 100, it may not be a great day to do small group or partners. Or if they're having a bunch of arguments, um, it may not be good to do group work or whatever that day. Just to gauge how that class is doing by talking with my coworkers, being in community with them. Also, invite your coworkers out to their house. Um, my lead teacher does that all the time, and I realize how much like we need that as educators. Um, even though it's like outside of contract hours, still like you need someone on your team in your school across the hall from you, championing you on as you teach your students to the best of your ability. <laughs> the fourth thing that I have learned in the first quarter is not to take things personal. I have seen that happen around me <laughs> when um, somebody is corrected or they just didn't know the expectation and like you have to have adult conversations like in this work you cannot even though it's hard because we do teach with our feelings or we do put our heart and soul into teaching but at the end of the day like if someone is correcting you not to take it personal because we're teachers and we're educators not everybody has everything that they need to be successful and I feel like talking to people reaching out um, asking for help that actually goes into my other point but all of that stems from like you cannot take this work personal whatever somebody gives you critiques just implement it to the best of your ability and I understand like everything may not work for your class for your classroom but try to take it with a grain of salt and not to take it personal because because I have found that when you do take things personal it only hinders the kids and makes you not the best teacher you can be of course whatever suggestions um, critique somebody give you like my aunt likes to say take the meat and like leave the bones take what you can get from that information but then implement it or do with that information what you can with it and leave the rest make it go in one ear and out the other but um it's important not to take this work personal because at the end of the day it should be all about the students in every school hopefully i don't want this video to be too long but i'd love to go into more discussion down in the comments if any of these relate to you or you had to learn these yourself go ahead and comment that down below as well and subscribe if you uh, want to see more content like this going to my fifth point i've had to learn to ask questions it's okay to ask for help that's why i said they kind of tie together my fourth and fifth point because um even when you ask for help or critiques like i want people to come critique me to show me how i could be doing things better um at first i was afraid to do that like the first few weeks of school i'm like this is when i felt like i was on an island by myself and i realized i don't have all the tools that i need to be successful here it, was, it wasn't until i started asking questions where my teachers started getting better my classroom started to flow um and i just felt better going to work because i knew what i was doing and i felt like i was equipped to have a great day that day and also to teach my students well which is the end goal so don't be afraid to ask questions if somebody turns you down or say that it's a stupid question um go to somebody else <laughs> like at the end of the day they may not have the answer for you but go to someone who does or just keep asking you may even need to ask um your co-teacher or people on your grade level or your lead teacher um admin whatever you need to do to get your questions answered because i feel like sorry if the lighting is changing but i have learned that not asking only hinders your students so make sure you need to hunt go on a search for whoever you need to to get the answers to your questions um that is it for this video don't forget to create a great day and i'll see you guys in my next one peace